ended when it should have and too soon. If this is like fans of Tim Powers say, eh, then I'm definitely checking out more of his books. And I accidentally read the whole volume. While I'm working on those, you guys can let me know what you would like me to read next. Okay, I finished uh, volume two of Mermaid Saga. So I, this is the day after the last vlog clip from the last, I, I read it in another day. I just, these, these little, not little actually, uh, these volumes are such fast, fast reads and really manga reads faster than novels anyway, but these are so adorable addictive for me at least like I said before it's a pretty streamlined story it's not anything too complicated but it is something that's pretty dark and pretty I don't know just compelling just exciting I'm just like I'm I'm dying to read it every time I pick it back up it's just, I don't want to stop so I flew th through this one too and I don't have a lot more to say about it I think that so these two volumes are all we have here this is all there is and I think that it ended it ended, it both ended when it should have and too soon, if that makes sense. So this is following the two main characters that I talked about in the last vlog clip, Yuta and Mana, who are two people who ate of the mermaid flesh, therefore have gained immortality and like I said in the last vlog, there's a lot more to it than that. It's a lot more complicated than that. You don't automatically gain immortality, but they are some of the lucky few who have, and they did, but now they're searching for a mermaid to gain their mortality back. And along the way, they are going to different towns and encountering other people who have interacted with mermaids as well one way or another whether it be also eating of mermaid flesh or maybe they had mermaid ashes that they did something with or mermaid blood or there, there's a gambit of things and so they're, they're going to different towns encountering different people who have been affected by mermaids one way or another. My main complaint is that there just weren't enough mermaids in this story. The first story was so mermaid centric I really thought that this manga was gonna be more mermaid centric than it was but um, it wasn't. There, It was mostly people who have been affected by mermaids one way or another as opposed to mermaids. So I really wish we had more interactions with actual mermaids in the story. It was still fantastic, it was still compelling and exciting and dark, but it just wasn't mermaid-centric enough, despite being very mermaid-centric. Um, it started to feel really, really repetitive as far as, you know, go to a town, interact with people, defeat the person who's bad, liberate the people that are good, not really liberate, yeah, liberate, save them from the bad people, and and then move on and continue to try to find a mermaid. Um, it was a very open-ended ending, which I tend to like open-endedness, but this was too open-ended for me. It, we had a goal that we were trying to accomplish and it feels like the goal wasn't even really even acknowledged at the end so I'm kind of left like it's cool to have an open-ended ending but can we at least acknowledge <laughs> acknowledge what the ending was meant to be or what we all thought we were gonna it doesn't matter I still loved it I had a blast reading it um, I think it ended when it started to feel repetitive and I started to get tired of doing the same thing it stopped so it was like perfect for that, but I do wish that the ending had a little bit more of a conclusion than it did. But I still loved it and I'm still, I definitely recommend it if you want just like a quick manga to breeze through and have a great time with. On Stranger Tides, I'm still reading. The pencil actually fell out so I can't even show you exactly where I am. I'm gonna have to find my place again. But I've read a little bit farther. The adventure has started. We have the inciting, not really the inciting, we have the thing that we're trying to accomplish um, has started and that thing that we're trying to accomplish, that's the scene that I remember. And I'm just, I'm so excited now that we're really getting into the thick of it. Anyway, um, that's, I finished this. Still working on this. Should have it done by the end of the week. And that's, welcome to the vlog.
home now, if you can't tell by the uh, background. And I finished on Stranger Tides on the way home, or just after I got home maybe? It's, I don't know. I really enjoyed this. You know, when I said I was gonna read this for vacation, I got several comments, or maybe it was last video, it was last video, when I was talking about my first impressions of it, I got several comments of people saying that this was by large, not by large, by far not their favorite Tim Powers book. I had a great time. I do think nostalgia probably played a role in this because like I said, I read this in middle school. It's a book that I talked to my dad about and you know, it has some good memories to it. But also it's just like, it's wild and it's crazy and it's fun and it's weird. Um, I read somewhere that the Pirates of the Caribbean movies are largely inspired by this and I definitely see that inspiration big time. So if you're a fan of those movies, I do think you should check out the books. There's less le book. There's less humor in this than in the movies, but beyond that, there's so many things that you could draw parallels to. Um, the action in this is so gripping and exciting and fun. It's a wild chaotic times, a time at times. Um, it's such a fun adventure. There's so many. I love the way Tim Powers writes the magic because it just feels so tangible. It just feels like such a natural part of this world. This is the new world. This is, um, you know, when is this set? The back doesn't say when it's set. I guess I don't know what year it's set in, but it's historical. And it feels histor It feels like a piece of history, but it also feels like a piece of history if magic were just woven into the world. And it's everywhere. It's in the sea. It's in the soil. It's in our fingertips. It's everywhere. And it's beautiful. And I just think that he wrote... I have, gr I have grown. I used to be a big, big, hard magic system reader, and I still love that, but I have grown to absolutely adore a well-crafted soft magic system because I feel like soft magic systems are the most tangible things I can read. They're, they're the things that make it feel like if magic were a part of our world, this is what it would feel like. And this is what it, it feels so natural. It feels like this is all real. It feels so tangible and authentic to the real world that he's writing. Plus again, the plot in this thing is a wild ride. Characters are okay. I, I, I can't sing the praises of the characters. They're fine. Um, but I don't have a lot of complaints about it. Honestly, like I just had a good time. I just had a really good time. I thought it was fun. So I'm definitely gonna check out more Tim Powers. If this is like fans of Tim Powers say, eh, then I'm definitely checking out more of his books. When I got home, I was tired and uh, I decided to read a chapter or two of the next Hunter Hunter volume uh, just to like get myself back in the swing of this story and I accidentally read the whole volume and so we're going to talk about that too. Um, so, you know, timestamps always to skip around. I love seeing more of uh, Killua's family. Look at them. Look at that nonsense. Can you see? Here. I love seeing more of his dad and his granddad. I like seeing them in action. I like seeing their personalities. I'm concerned about how much I like them now because I love Killua and they obviously don't treat him well enough. So I don't want to love his family, but I do. You know, Togashi just knows how to write characters. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I am absolutely adoring getting to know the uh, Phantom Troop leader. Oh my goodness, his book where he can steal people's powers and put it in the book and use it as long as the book is open, stop. That is so fun. Um, Hisoka continues to amaze and disturb me. The fact that he is trying to contact Karapika to tell him, listen, those bodies you found, they're not real. He seems to actually be invested in Karapika and in their elite alliance, yet also he's such a disturbing, twisted character. I mean, truly, this man continues to amaze and disturb me, and I love it. Oh my goodness, Karapika just continuing to see his path, to see 
what he's doing and how he is changing um, this chick whose name I still have not bothered to learn but I love and adore because she's such a wild card because she's such I don't know I really like that character type that's like powerful and important but also um, not fully not a thoughtful person does that make sense am I getting across what I want to get across not someone who thinks through things, not someone who's very considerate, somebody who would take the eyeballs of people and just ooh and ah over them. I wonder about her, but I like her, even though she's terrible. We got the introduction of the Meteor City and all that that implies, and that's where most, if not all, I think all of the Phantom Troop are from, and I'm just super excited to dig into that more. Uh, a deeper explanation of, or rather maybe a re-explanation of Karapika's powers, which, um, you know, him, I said in the review that he is able to have all 100% uh, ability for all of the of the components of Nen, but it's his chains that it's in. I really liked having the refresher on his powers. You know, this, this magic power system, this power system is so complex that it, I just really appreciate getting refreshers on how people, different people, how it's affecting different people and the ways that they're integrating it into their lives because there's so much ability to make it unique to the individual so I really like the repetitiveness of the explanations because I need that I need I need it explained more than once I don't know if I'm stupid but but I need it for this power system and I love it I'm loving I'm loving the million and one ways that it shows up in the world and affects different people I'm just I'm just still having a great time so there's that um, I really need to start the bone ships because uh, that's one of my patreon buddy reads and I haven't even begun either of those so I gotta get on it so I guess that's what I'll do next after I film this video I'm about to film here's just really bad so I'm sorry but Moki or Mochi how do you say that Mochi Mochi a little bit okay bone ships I am that deep into it I don't know what to tell you it's not that interesting I'm not I'm not very into it um, it's a cool atmosphere it's a cool setting it's a cool world as much of it as I've seen I like they build their pirate ships or their ships out of the bones of dragons and now it turns out there is a dragon in the world that is alive the bones of ancient dragons by the way so the mechanics of it how they build these ships how like what parts of this of the dragon skeletons that they use for what part of the ship it's really cool but like it's just not that interesting plot wise or even character wise i'm just not that into it which is a shame actually this is my second rj barker book and in both of his books in the last book i read of his which was in a different series my thoughts were similar to this where it's like man this is so well written i just don't really care and ah uh, shucks but anyway i actually bought this book months ago and my dad read it immediately and loved it and then bought the next two books and he's now completed the trilogy and says that it's excellent and he says that it is a really boring start and takes like a good while to actually get good so we'll see I'm I'm gonna keep going just because my dad says it's so good and because it's a buddy read so I really should keep going but because I'm not really very interested in it I am also reading the Secrets of the Rune Stones, which I'm only a couple of chapters in, so I'll talk to you about that in the next reading vlog, but I'm here. Also, also, and, and, I need you guys to help me pick my next book. 
because I have more buddy reads that I haven't actually started yet that I really need to get to. So I have um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and We Have Always Lived in the Castle. I've read the prologue to Hitchhikers and loved it, um, but I, I'm trying to finish Bone Ships before I pick up yet another book, or at least finish this one before I pick up yet another book. So I'm going to keep working on those while I edit this vlog. While I'm working on those, you guys can let me know what you would like me to read next. And I'll just, I'll go with the one that, just comment the one that you want me to read, and I'll just go with the one that gets the most comments. And I'll start that one in the next vlog, hopefully. I'm also working on volume 12 of Hunter x Hunter. I'm not quite done with it, but I'm super close to done. And it's just phenomenal. Hisoka continues to be more and more and more terrifying and disturbing around every corner. Nen and Ren are being expanded more and more. The Phantom Troop is just a brilliant antagonist group. They, their individual powers and the way they use those abilities to cause chaos and problems, like the character that looks like it from the Adams Family, him duplicating all of the auction pieces, oh my goodness, it's, and then, then he can use that to be able to locate where the fake eyes are so they can get to the mafia daughter. Oh my goodness, this plot, these characters, these abilities. I'm just, if I didn't even like the, the plot, I would keep reading just because I'm so enthralled with the different ways these abilities manifest themselves in the different characters. It's so cool. The guy with the dogs died and I just wanna know what's gonna happen to the dogs. Are they just, is someone going to go to his house and get them and make sure they're good? Anyway, I am about to get into some serious stuff with the mind reedy chick and uh, there's a fight. There's a fight a happening. So um, I'm here, chapter 113, that scene. So I can tell something big is about to happen and I'm having a great time and I'm almost done with this arc. And it's been great. So that's the vlog. Those are the things that I am reading currently and that I will hopefully start next week. So don't forget to comment. Let me know which one you want me to pick up next. I am home from vacation, which I said in the last clip, and feeling settled in, feeling good, getting some more videos. If you don't know already, I'm increasing my video upload schedule on my main channel, so there will be three videos a week there now, plus this video, so you're going to have four videos a week from me, which is solid. Um, so I post videos every, two, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the main channel, Thursdays on this channel. I think there's a video essay I want to be working on for this channel, so maybe that'll go up on a Tuesday sometime. I don't know. I'm just like, I'm really, really loving making videos, so I'm just going to maybe put out a lot of content. But please do chat with me more about these books in the comments. I'll see you again soon. Bye.